Hey, can you give it up for all of our campuses right now? Come on. Hey, we want to welcome you today. We're going to try it one more time here. We're transitioning a little early here, but could we give it up for all of our campuses today that are joining us? We thank you. We love you today. You know, we, we just finished our worship here as, as you did there at the other campuses. Today is a very unique day. It's a day of remembrance. It's a day of celebration. It's a day where we can see a watermark. You know, when there's been a flood, you go back and you can, you can see it on the trees. You can see where the water's been. How many realize that just tells you how high it can go? Are you with me? There are just some things we need to remember how high we can go. Some of those earmark moments that God says, look where I brought you from, because he never takes you from something, he doesn't take you to something. But he gives those watermarks that says, here's really what was once your ceiling, this is going to become your floor. And I'm going to let you stand on top of this to go farther. That's what a young generation is all about. And, um, and Lisa and I today, at all of our campuses, I know things will be just a bit different today. As, as I said earlier, in the early morning hours of Friday of November 25th, Pastor Dave Smith, who he and Jackie again have been with us for over 17 years now, they, he stepped over and uh, actually got to greet face to face the Jesus he has served all these years. And today we get to celebrate, remember, we get to weep, we get to laugh. Because if there was one thing Pastor Dave loved to do, is he loved to laugh. I've, I've seen very few pictures of him that he was not laughing or smiling and if you looked in the rearview mirror of what he was laughing at, it was usually the love that he had for his wife and the love that he had for his children, but also the love that he had for the children of this house. Can we just very simply just thank God for a life that has been well lived? Can we, can we do that? You see a lot of individuals with Captain America shirt because really if you went to Walmart, Target, wherever you go, you probably would not have found a figurine for Captain America because Pastor Dave had already purchased it and it was in his office. If you ever walked into his office, you knew that he wanted to, he wanted to give something to children. That they understood what a hero was all about. And it wasn't Captain America. It was Captain the Lord of the armies of heaven and earth. It was Jesus himself that he pointed to. So Lisa and I, and, and in just a moment, she's going to introduce David. David, the middle child, is going to come in a moment. And just share a couple of things. But we felt it was important that our children join with their parents today. I pray that by the end of this service, that even as parents, we have a little more ability to walk with our kids, even during times of question, times we don't understand. The thing about facing death, it's the last enemy any of us will face. But death has been swallowed up in victory. Actually, he's given us the ability to laugh in the face of death. Because death no longer has a sting. It no longer has power. Why? Because Jesus took the stinger out of death. He became the one who said, I conquered death, hell, and the grave. And so we're a people of hope. We're a people that understand that the Lord, what He has in store for those who love Him, has yet to be seen and yet to be comprehended. I want to say very at the very beginning of this to, to Pastor Jackie. There you are. Your kids, you're here. I just want to tell you we love you. And we thank God for how he has used you and will continue to use you. 
and your husband who the words are hard to find. And we're just very thankful. We're very thankful for you, Brittany. We love you, sweetie. And David, we're proud of you. And you, Johnny. And I know that there are going to be marriages happening in the near future. But today, we just want to tie some things together for all of us as a family. Pastor Dave Smith, he was a husband, a father, a brother, a son, and a pastor. But more than anything else, the thing that I loved about Dave is he was a lover of God. As a matter of fact, one of the first things I ever heard him do is when we had a kids, we, had a, we, we brought them here for a kids crusade. Lisa will share with you, she met them by doing a women's conference over in Georgia 18 years ago. And out of this, the first time I had the opportunity of sitting in a service... There was this thing that they would do that it made every adult, because Dave had a statement he would use all the time. He said, I'm going to teach the gospel so simply today that even an adult could understand. <laughs> and that, that he would say that constantly. But I can still hear the kids, because what he would do is he, would, he or Jackie would say, how many here love Jesus? And we were supposed to, in all of our dignity, in everything of being adult, go, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. So in all of your dignity, at all of our campuses today, I feel like you need a little bit of children's church because some of you have gotten too manured, I mean too matured in your life. And who in here? It's our wives that keep us straight on everything. But I just feel like that we need to find out who in here loves Jesus. <laughs> Come on. Does anybody love Jesus? You see, Pastor Dave preached the gospel in such a way that even a child could understand, but yet more than that, that even an adult could comprehend. From pirates to superheroes, to sky kids, to creation part, 17 years filled with themes to teach Jesus to children. Always in excellence. Very extremely meticulous in creating an atmosphere for encountering God. Church ministries came from all over the country to see Kids Quest. Moms and dads, you may remember the very first time you walked a child into Kids Quest and they thought they were at Disney World. Churches would come from all over the country just to see the creativity. To see the little things of, of puppets and characters. My favorite was actually Blue. I don't care. He would put his hand in that monkey. And I felt like I was watching. I was with the monkey. He was the monkey. He Blue. I, you could not convince me that puppet was not alive. And more people heard about Jesus. With that blue monkey. I'm, the creativity, all of the characters. If you ever heard the voices of Dave Smith. All of the, the different characters he would create and, and make them come alive. He made everything. He, he, would, he, would, he would trust people to do basic colors. and ba He'd let you do a background. 
or act like he was appreciating that. But I've never seen anyone take a can of spray paint and cause something to come out and to go, how did you see that? And it's as if the great sculptor would say, it was there all along. I just had to get everything away from it so you could see what was there. People would come. Over 400 kids over these last number of years went through an intensive discipleship program called Quest Force. Could I ask right now, how many of you in here, you went through Quest Force? Let me see your hand. Let me ask you, would you stand if you went through Quest Force? All at our campus. Just stand up right where you are. Earmarked. Stamped. You can't forget, if you raise up a child, do you understand, church, please hear me, the church was not given to take the place of your family. We were given to help you be a family and to work as a family. We work together to to help strengthen your hands because what God intended and what he has always established is that it is families that raise children. It's moms and dads. But God gives us gifts like pastors Dave and Jackie. He gives us gifts to walk alongside of us that create questions that we have to try to find an answer when we go home. They help us with tools. They help us with memory verses. All of my children, my grandchildren, have all been impacted by Kids Quest. It's an amazing thing when God gives us someone to help us. And Lisa, I want you to come because... I know we've watched this our our whole ministry here and forever grateful for the gift that God has given us. Each of us is personally given a gift, a measure of God's creativity that he places inside of us. He gives us these seeds so that we can throw them out of our lives for the rest of our lives. So what I want to ask you today is... What will you do with the gift that God has placed in your life? Pastors Dave and Jackie took the gift that God has given them and they have been touching children's lives that will impact eternity. A great missionary, T.L. Osborne, once said to Rusty when asked, How did you get the vision for ministry in so many nations and to reach so many millions of people? And his answer was this, I never asked for a great vision for ministry. I was never called to some of the places that I went or to do some of the things that I did. But when I saw what he sees, when my heart broke for what breaks his And when I heard the cry of the lost in my own ears, I knew I had to spend the rest of my life doing something about it. And that is exactly what Pastor Dave did. Down to every detail. Every time he picked up a paintbrush. Every time he created a puppet. Every time he was staying up all night long, not only praying for his kids and praying for your kids, but being creative. It wasn't just so he could be creative. It's so he could be the expression of the God that he served. That's what he did with what was in his hands. So I ask you today, what will you do with what he's placed in your hands? I want to ask David to come and join Pastor Rusty and I on behalf of his family. (sighs) What do you say? Right. Um, 
I've told a lot of people over the last few days that I got to experience the man behind the curtain. And it was an honor. I know to all of you, he was a great pastor and a great minister. and He, he affected your children. But to me, he was just a great husband and a great father. He was the, the priest of a household. And I want to speak on behalf of his life as a man, not as a pastor. He never once raised his voice at my mother. He never lifted a hand. He never called her a name. He said, I'm never going to say anything to your mom that I would regret. If they didn't agree, they didn't argue. He would take her hand. He would walk her into their bedroom. They would close the door. They would come to a decision. There was never a, I decided. There was never a, your mom decided. There was always a, we decided this for our household. He did everything for, for her and for me and my sister and my brother. He, he would... He was always there. He always told me and my sister and my brother, he said, us Smiths, we weren't created for a nine to five. We just weren't. And I'd say, I know. We'd say, I know. I know, Dad, it's three o'clock in the morning and we're still up. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he's a good man. And um, I just wanted to share really quickly. I know I don't have a whole lot of time today, but he talked about heaven. Any, any of you who ever were in Kids Quest, um, you know that he talked about heaven. He was always ready for heaven. And uh, Pastor Rusty, a couple days ago, he told me um, in the middle of everything, he said, you're going to have to prepare a statement. And I tried. I did. <laughs> and um, I've got it on my phone. I never finished it, though. I didn't, and I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, something that I wrote in there was um, he would always tell the kids in Kids Quest that you can eat as much chocolate cake as you want, and you'll never get fat. <laughs> <laughs> and he always told, right? <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Amen? Uh, that's heaven to me, yeah. That's and uh, <laughs> he would always say, and we've said it so many times, Over the last few days, he would always say, when I get to heaven, I want to race the angels from one galaxy to the other. He said, I want to walk to the Father. I want to hug him. I want to embrace the Father. And I want to challenge him to a race (laughs) from one end of the galaxy to the other. He said, I want to see it all. He said, I'm not going to run and take off. I'm going to stand right where I am. I'm going to put my hands in the air, and I'm going to fly. He always told me that. He always told us that. He was always so ready for heaven. Um, and when um, yesterday um, I was hugging Pastor Dad, and uh, God just spoke to me, and Pastor Dad was saying, You know, I'm so sorry. He is in heaven, and I know those things. And God spoke to me, and God said this one phrase, and I told it to Pastor Dad in his ear, and he said, someone has to paint the sky. <laughs> and I said, someone's got to paint the sky. <laughs> and, um, and I thought that was it. And then um, I didn't know, but um, my brother's beautiful fiance, her mom told her, she said, and we didn't know this at the time, it's all God, but um, she said, take Johnny out and just have him look at the sky. And um, yesterday, Brittany needed to go home to Nashville, and um, it's hard. Um, life's hard sometimes for some people, and a lot of times all you have, the only people that will understand are family. Um, But when she was on her way home, I won't go into too many details, but when she was on her way home, God called this woman to worship. He called her to use her voice. And I told her before she left, I said, please just worship. 
It was dad's favorite sound to hear us sing. Please just worship. And she told me, I don't know how. I don't remember how. It's been a hard, it's been a hard few years. I don't remember how. And on her way home, she picked up her little guitar that she has. She began to sing. She began to sing a song that uh, is by a very dear friend to us. Her name is Rita Springer. She has a song called It's Gonna Be Worth It. And Brittany began to sing that song and worship the Lord. And she was asking the Lord, she said, God, I just need to see him one more time. I just need him. And I called Brittany on her way home to ask where she was, how long she'd be. And uh, for the first time that she looked up from looking down at her phone at lyrics and chords, she saw the biggest shooting star across the sky, um, like a flare. And she knew that, that God allows, God reveals himself in moments when we are walking in obedience of calling. When, when we're walking in the calling that God has placed on our lives, he reveals himself in small ways like that. So she came home and she told us that story. And we all felt that it would be appropriate after all these things because God is in the details. If you've ever been in Kids Quest, you know God is in the details. Um, my father, my mom would always say that uh, she would catch him painting behind a door so meticulously. And she would say, Dave, why are you doing that? No one's going to see that. And he said, I'm going to see it. God's going to see it. God is in the details. And so after we heard, after we all had, each three of us had had our moment where God spoke to us in different ways, whether it be through our fiance, through our future family, through brokenness, through revelation, we all decided to put his jackets on and we went out and we just laid in the driveway together. We looked up at the stars and we laughed. We had community. We had our family, our fiancés and our boyfriends and our girlfriends with us, our family, that they were his kids too. And we just laughed together. And um, we all saw the brightest shooting star, like a flare in the sky. And it slowed down. And all of us all together, laying there, all went, whoa! <laughs> and... Um, I just wanted to share that with you all. God is in the details. He's in the details. And the man behind the curtain was brave and strong and true. He loved his wife. He loved his kids. He never shouted at us. He never yelled at us. He never did anything in anger. His home was a solitude and a place of peace and rest for the weary. Um, it's a good man. That's all I've been able to say to a lot of people. That's all I could get out is just he's a good man. And that's a vast understatement. If you knew him, you loved him. And if you knew him, you knew he loved you. And um, there was never a man more dependable. And I look out and I see all of his kids. I see, I see Blake and I see... Chima, I see Victoria, I see Noah and Daniel and Austin, Kelsey and Rohan. There's so many of you. I see Sean. I see Kayla and Kelsey. I see Todd and Emily. I see all of his nieces and nephews. He was all of our dad in a way. And we all knew that we could depend on him. And if he was here, he wouldn't be sitting on the front row. He'd be standing in the sound booth because right. he's not going to take up a seat that someone else can sit in. Um, there aren't words. There aren't. I'll try for a lifetime to be able to let my words be a tribute of the blessing that he was in my life. Um, and I, I want to say for on behalf of my family, on behalf of my mother, thank you for your texts, 
We haven't gotten to read them quite yet, but we will. But thank you for being there for us. Thank you for praying for us, standing at the wall when it felt like it was going to fall down underneath us, holding the wall up. Thank you for being there. I asked my mom this morning what, um, what she wanted me to say, and she wanted me to just say thank you. Um, Pastor Rusty, thank you. I know um, not many pastors will allow a vision like his to be invested in. And he knew that. He knew that if he found something, that he'd text you a picture of it. And you'd say, get it. If it's going to further the kingdom, get it. That's very rare. It's rare in a senior pastor to care so much about children's ministry. It's very rare. And he knew that. And he knew your heart, your heart for people. He always says Kids Quest was nothing more than a net. We're fishers of men. That's what gets the fish in the door. That's what it was all about was people. He knew if he could get kids into the church and have them want to stay, that he could get salvations in the church from parents, from teenagers. If you can grab hold of the children, if you can fish out and catch the children in your net, you catch the whole family, and he knew that. He's a good man, and I just, I want to read one more thing. Um, I felt it was appropriate during worship. I just felt like I needed to read this. It's a quote um, from a comic book. Of course. Um, But it's a quote from Captain America. He said this. He said, it doesn't matter what the press say. It doesn't matter what the politicians or the mobs say. It doesn't matter if the whole country decides something wrong is something right. This nation was founded on one principle. Above all else, the requirement that we stand up for what we believe no matter the odds, no matter the consequences. When the mob and the press and the whole world tell you to move, your job is to plant yourself like a tree beside the river of truth and tell the world, no, you move. We love you so much. We love this house so much. I don't know what my life would be like without this church and this family. It's all I've ever known. This city is all I've ever known. We love you. We're grateful for each of you. My, my father, he loved all of you. He was proud of all of you. Um, so we just want to thank you for being here. We know that we have so much family to call if we need anything. I, on, uh, I only know two things. One is that it's not fair. And one is that I will trust in my God. I will not lean into my own understanding. In all my ways, I will acknowledge him. He will light my path. He will set it straight. So we love you. We love this house. We love our family. We bless you today. We thank you so much. We love you. portion of Psalm 139 says this, to you the night shines as bright as day, darkness and light are the same to you because there is no darkness where you are because you are the light of the world. 
You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship and creativity in me is marvelous. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. You saw me before I was ever born and before I ever breathed my first breath. Every single day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment I would live and experience from the first breath of my birth to the last breath of my death was laid out and prepared before one day had ever passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up every morning, you are still with me. Our lives, the days of each of our books, though they are measured in seconds, minutes, hours, days, and years, is just a fleeting moment. It's a blink of an eye compared to eternity because eternity is forever. Pastor Dave lived his life and presented a message to children so that their eternity could be shifted and spent with Jesus forever. It was what he lived for. It's what he breathed. I want to speak very quickly to our precious Kids Quest kids and their parents. Death should never be feared, especially for us who have hope. Because hope's name is Jesus. And we know life is what he gives when we surrender our all to him. Death always causes us to think of life. It may be hard to understand, but it is inevitable with all things that have been created that there is a beginning and there is an end. There is birth and there is death. Because kids, flowers fade and their petals fall and trees lose their leaves and animals pass away. Seeds are planted and sown and they're blown by the wind and carried by animals and insects. Buildings even crumble and fall. But unless a seed falls into the ground and dies, it cannot produce fruit. And I'm telling you something, a massive, gigantic giant of a man was planted in all of our lives, and he will live on. To those of us who have this amazing hope, we know that our last breath ushers us instantly into the presence of our Savior. There is an inner peace and an anchor of our soul that produces the assurance that heaven is real and eternity is forever with God. Heaven is beautiful. It's filled with the light of God and the warmth of His presence. This is the atmosphere that Pastors Dave and Jackie created for your kids in Kids Quest every week. You weren't there just to have a good time or to have a place to go just so mom and dad could be in the sanctuary. No, they wanted you to experience the presence of God and heaven on earth. Pastor Dave always said, Dave said this, pointing to the stage and all its amazing creativity. All of this is nothing but a fishing net. Today, we draw them to Jesus. To all of our precious kids and parents today who every Sunday your lives are and will continue to be impacted by Kids Quest, there's no fear. Ask as many questions as you need to ask. Talk about the answers together. But most importantly, go to God's Word when you don't know what to say. When I was eight years old, my hero, my, one of my heroes, my grandmother passed away. She was terrible with directions. They always made fun of her because she always got lost. And I remember when she graduated to heaven, I cried because I was so worried that she wouldn't know how to get there. <laughs> I mean, it was the joke for years. I was so worried she wouldn't know how to find her way. And you might ask mom and dad, how did he know how to find heaven? First of all, he knew because he lived heaven every day of his life. And heaven happens in an instant. It's supernatural. It's a wonder. 
Heaven is more real than what you and I are seeing in the physical right now. You might ask, does he miss his family? Does he miss us and think about us? Pastor Dave right now in this moment is completely filled with love and the wholeness of Jesus. He's fulfilled in every way. As a matter of fact, he is more fulfilled and alive in this moment than he's ever been in his entire life. Because he's in the presence of Almighty God. Revelation 17 and 21, it says, There will be no more death or tears or crying or pain because heaven is our destination. Heaven is where we originated from within the heart of God and heaven is where we will spend an eternity when Jesus is the Lord of our lives. You might ask mom and dad, can Pastor Dave see things on earth? Hebrews 12, 1 says, oh yes, because we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses that are cheering us on. Those of us who have gone before us and those who are standing in the faith of God. Yes. To those of you who grew up in Kids Quest or were a part of Quest Force, Pastor Dave would say over you, The latter portion of Hebrews 12. This is what he would say. Throw off everything that hinders you. Or trips you up. Or causes you to be distracted. And the sin that could easily entangle you. And run with all of your might. And all of your strength. And perseverance. The race that he has marked out for you. And daily, constantly, and completely. Fix your eyes on Jesus. The pioneer. And the perfecter of your faith. Because heaven is a person. It's not just a place. Heaven is a person. Jesus would say, this is eternal life that you would know my father. And the son that he sent. This angel is one of the most depicting drawings of strength that I've ever seen in my life. There's actually a better picture that they have, but this is one of the drawings of Pastor Dave. This is the strength of an angel he saw. This is a picture, I believe, Of the angelic host that he stands before the throne crying holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. A depiction of God's ability to bring us up with wings as eagles. To strengthen what remains. A call that requires a choice. Heaven is Jesus. It is the place to be with Him and God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As Johnny comes, a place where we have to make a decision. The altar was one of the favorite points of Pastor Dave and Jackie. Only God knows how many thousands of children responded to an altar. Who made a decision at an early age. You say, well our kids may be too early. Maybe too young. I was five years of age when I gave my life to Jesus. I can tell you I met the real Jesus at five. And I love him more today at 53. Than I could have ever imagined. Why? Because we must come as a little child. He comes to give comfort for brokenness, release for captivity, freedom for bondage, favor for failure, justice for injustice. He gives beauty for ashes, joy for doom, praise for despair. Solomon would actually say he has made everything beautiful in his time. What will we do? With the one that was so simply taught, yet eternally embraced. The one whose name is Jesus. 
who even today is maybe you didn't know Pastor Dave, but you know the pain you've walked through with the loss of a family member or a friend. He is the friend to the wounded heart. He comes today at every campus. He reaches out to us. You see, our understanding has been darkened. We've just we've been blinded. We've been alienated. We've been shut out from the fellowship of intimacy with Him. But Jesus brought us back so simply, yet so profoundly at the cross. So abusively that He took our pain so that we might gain His presence. That's how much He loved us. To Pastor Dave, the kingdom was not an experiment, but an experience that whosoever will. My son-in-law wrote something. He had no idea I was going to share this today, and I close with this. I found this post early this morning, and he said, I've been thinking about this poem since we got news about Pastor Dave this morning. Oh, Captain, my Captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. He wasn't just blessed with creativity alone. He had that otherworldly kind of creativity that touched with, that's touched with God-breathed revelation and infused with God's love. He said, I got to serve at two camps and two kids' crusades with Pastor Dave, and I was always fascinated at the way his brain worked. There wasn't a detail too small. If you go into Kids Quest right now, you will see emergency lights that look like a robot. There wasn't any idea too far-fetched. There wasn't a kid who wasn't included and loved and changed for the better. The Bible says that in the last days the young men will see visions and old men will dream dreams. Pastor Dave did both. He had the imagination to dream the dreams and the know-how to make the visions happen. The prize Pastor Dave sought his whole life, though, was Jesus. And now he has seen him face to face. His legacy will live on in this earth and in eternity. He said, my kids are recipients of his ministry. And I'm thankful for that. There will never be another man like him. But I tell you today, Dave would tell you, there will never be another one like Jesus. Would you bow your heads please this morning? Father, as our campus pastors take this service, thank you for a life well lived. One that even today launches people into the heart of Jesus to see the beauty of the Lord and the holiness of your majesty. Touch them today. Even, Lord, as this visitation that is tomorrow, this celebration service, Lord, many that will be here that will give them opportunity to greet them and to express their love to them. I pray, Father, that today there would be an expression of Jesus. Lord, even in, as in lieu of flowers as they have asked for, Lord, for anything that's given, that it would go to not only, not only kids' quest and to see a miracle continue to happen there. But Father, also a ministry that was so dear to pastors Dave and Jackie. One that, Lord, is even named for orphan care after a precious boy that meant so much to this house, Adam Reed Kirby. A care for orphans through ark that, to the nations. That, Lord, any proceeds that come in in lieu of flowers, Lord, we'll, be, we'll go to both of those ministries as a memorial fund to him. We love you today. Minister to every life in Jesus' name. With no one looking.